Hey, it's Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day. This has been Bible Boat Week. You know, they have a boat week in Miami. They've got one in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, there they're selling boats. We're not selling boats. This week we've been talking about boats in the Bible. Uh, my buddy uh, Jarrett, pastor at our church, uh, Pastor Jarrett challenged me to do a week on boat stories and boat passages. And so we've done it. Uh, today's the last one. But I got an email from one of you. And the email had a Scottish proverb. And the proverb went like this. There are good ships and wood ships and ships that sail the sea. But the best ships are friendships, and may they always be. Yes, that's a different type of ship, a friendship, but that's a great Scottish proverb. I offer it to you. But what I'm seeking to do today with you is finish this week with a great story. It's a riveting story. If you want to read the whole story, and it's worth the read, get a Bible out and turn to the book of Acts in the New Testament and go to chapter 27. You can read the story there. It's a story where Paul, the lawyer, uh, apostle, um, uh, missionary, uh, he, he wore many hats. Paul is uh, on his way to Rome as a prisoner to appeal his case to Caesar because Paul was a Roman citizen and he had the rights to seek the ruling of the imperium so he could go to Caesar and have a ruling on his case. But Paul's being taken there in a big ship. I mean, the ship holds like 267 people, I think, were on it or some number like that. But the ship in the Mediterranean world, you're not supposed to, back in that day, go out into the seas in a ship or a boat during the winter months because the storms are so great during those months that it's not safe. Now they were, the, Paul and his people were skirting the winter months. They were just right up against it, but it looked like they might be able to squeeze in the trip. Paul says, don't do it, but the ship left Crete anyway, hoping that they could get to, to, to Rome. Uh, they were not able to do so. Uh, the storm came, a, a horrible storm that lasted for weeks. It cost them all their cargo. It nearly cost them their lives. Uh, ultimately, they run aground on a reef on the Isle of Malta. And it, it's a riveting read. It's really a good read. And the author of Acts was along on the journey. And so you, you, you get that firsthand rendition of what happened. And it not only gives insight into naval techniques of the first century, but, but it really opens up a fearsome read. And, and it makes sense because ships are often an analogy, biblically as well as now, an analogy for the journey of our lives. And, and you want smooth sailing in life. But there are times where the storms of life, I mean, this metaphor is deep in our vocabulary. We want smooth sailing, but the storms of life uh, 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 blow against us and uh, endanger us. And, and we do run risk of running aground or making a shipwreck in our life, uh, experiencing a shipwreck. And, and this speaks to that in that it speaks of God's divine care even in the midst of the storms of life. Nothing will thwart God's purposes when we align ourselves with those purposes. This should be a great comfort and a great solace because storms will come and storms will go, but we will abide when we abide in the will and the love and the care of God. So I don't know what your weekend has in front of it. I don't know what your weather is gonna be. Uh, in the atmosphere or in your life. But I do know that as we go with God, we go in his love and care and safety. And so I send you with that on this, your video thought for the day. See you next Monday.